Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about brakes. Now, this truck here has an issue in the morning. If you apply the brake pedal, what you'll hear is a big gush of air. Now, it seems to only happen in the mornings when the temperatures are low. And that means that the brake booster is going bad. That's the item that's located here behind the master cylinder. Now, this vehicle here is a 1990 Ford Bronco, but you can use this walkthrough for pretty much any 1980 to 1996 Ford car or truck van. Even other manufacturers, it's very similar. They all have master cylinders and they all have brake boosters and it's a very, very similar process. I was able to actually find a brand new one online. That's the part number. I'll link it up in the description. This here is the master cylinder and that there's the brake booster. Now to be able to tell which one is bad, they'll be giving you two different symptoms. If your brake pedal goes all the way down to the floor with hardly any braking and you have to pump it a couple of times for the brakes to grab, that usually means it's a master cylinder issue. If you apply the brakes and all you hear is a gush of air and the brakes firm up really good but there's hardly any stopping power, that'll be the brake power booster that's bad. And that is what we're going to replace today, so let's get right into it. Now the neat thing about these trucks, you can actually remove the brake booster without actually having to disconnect the brake lines on the master cylinder. So I'll show you that we'll be removing the master cylinder and just placing it off to the side while it's still connected to the brake line so you don't have to refill the brake fluid or bleed them and, and do all of that. So for your first step, place these vacuum lines out of the way of the master cylinder. This one here is for the cruise control. Just Put it out of the way here. Unplug your master cylinder electrical. Next you're going to want to remove your brake booster vacuum line. So in order to do that you have to squeeze this clip together. Grab it on both ends here. Once you have it squeezed, slide it down, release it, and then just pull off this hose here. You can unhook this clip to move the vacuum line further out of the way if you need it. Remove the brake line retainer nut. Slide off the retainer. Using a deep wall, remove the two master cylinder nuts. Now again, we're not going to be completely removing the master cylinder. That will require us to remove these brake lines, which in essence is going to leak all the brake fluid and we're going to have to pump and bleed the system of air. So instead, we are just simply going to remove the master cylinder off of the brake booster and place it to the side, something like that. Now you may have to tie it further back but I believe this should be enough to be able to remove this booster. Also, you can remove the complete cruise control as one unit. Just take off these bolts here. And then set the whole unit off to the side. Now here is a shot with everything moved out of the way. And again, the master cylinder can go further back. So you can tie it further back if you need to. And here is the cruise control moved out of the way here. So that's plenty of space for this booster to come forward and out. Now working inside the vehicle, you need to locate the shaft from the brake booster, which is this here. It comes from the firewall into the brake pedal. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna remove this clip here. So this shaft along with the brake sensor will come out. This is the brake lamp sensor here. Now this pin you usually just press it out here like this and you need this plastic washer right here so make sure you take this off and you save it now again this here is the brake pedal it moves up and down freely 
this will all slide off as one piece now. The brake lamp sensor and the booster rod. Just like that. And then you can just slide off the brake lamp sensor and place it off to the side. Now up underneath the dash here, follow the brake pedal up by the rod. You'll see four nuts actually holding the brake booster to the chassis. So remove these four nuts and you can remove the brake booster. And now back in the engine bay, simply just lift and remove your booster. Okay, now here you can compare the two boosters. This here's the old one. You can tell she's got some wear on it. It's not as firm as this one here. And uh, this plate's kind of pretty much gone. This is the original one from the vehicle. So you can see here, the shaft just pops right out. I'm not sure if that's supposed to do that. That one seems pretty solid. Again, this is a brand new unit here, not a remanufacturer. And make sure off your old one, you inspect anything that you might need. I did notice that this one here has like a coupler going inside the shaft. So make sure you take that out and use it on your new one. Now I also wanted to mention to not actually throw away your original unit. These actually can be rebuilt. I was able to pop this one open and it seems like it's a rebuildable one. This piece here that just kind of fell out. It was only due to that clip not being fully inserted. So this looks like a pretty good unit. I'll probably rebuild it later. I'm going to go with the new one for now. And when that one goes out, I'll have this one here nice and ready to be put back in. My advice to you guys is to keep the original unit. Uh, they're very hard to find nowadays and they are rebuildable. Okay, now carefully guide the booster rod into the firewall. Like that. And then line up the studs into the holes here. Push it, against, push it in just like that. Back inside the vehicle, we're going to install the nuts onto the new booster. Now, my booster happened to come with new hardware, so we'll be using these instead of the original. Now, remember to install that coupler that we removed from the old unit. It slides right into here. Next, slide the brake sensor onto it like this. And then feed it into the brake rod up here, just like that. Make sure it's all the way in. Jiggle it back and forth, make sure it's all the way in. You should see the hole here for the pin. Install this plastic washer. And then install the pin. Just like that. Now this next step is very important. This push rod here coming out of the brake booster needs to be adjusted and calibrated. If you don't calibrate it correctly, it'll give you either a symptom of a dragging brake or if it's not adjusted properly, you have to press further on your brake pedal to be able to engage the master cylinder. So what I'm talking about here, if you see, once I slide on the master cylinder, it goes all the way on. On the calibration process, that's not good. What you need is to pull out this rod, basically unscrew it, until you feel it hit the master cylinder first. And what I mean by that, you'll see here, there. You see how it hits the master cylinder and I have a little bit of play before it actually touches the booster. You want that rod to engage the master cylinder at the exact same time the master cylinder engages the brake booster. To adjust that, once you get it right about here, turn it just a little bit inward until it's flush. So see it needs a little bit more.
There. Now there's no more play. That's where I'm going to tighten it. So to tighten it, make sure you tighten the second nut, not the first one. The second nut has to get tightened. You may have to hold the rod with a pair of pliers back here as you tighten it. Make sure you tighten it good. Now slide on your master cylinder and bolt it down. Now install your cruise control assembly. Next remove the plug off your booster vacuum and install your vacuum line to the booster. And install your clamp. Set your vacuum lines back, clamp it in, and lastly, plug in your master cylinder. Alright guys, that's a wrap. We got our new brake booster installed, and everything's looking real good. If this video helped you guys, give me a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!